Welcome to Book Chat Live. Join us on Spreaker and comment during the podcast. Hey everyone, this is Tamara from ShelfAddiction.com and welcome to Book Chat Live. I bet you're wondering, why is she live this evening? There's no author present. Well, to be quite frank, I did not pre-record uh, my episode for today, so I thought, let's have a total chill, laid-back conversation, and I thought it would be fun to do it live. So, welcome to episode 20, and we are going to be talking about a few topics, of which one is um, how to find what to read next. Um, a lot of us book nerds always ask that question, what do we read next when we're done with our series or whatever book that we're into at the time. And there are some really cool um, websites and ways to figure that out. If you are listening live, please feel free to type in any suggestions or recommendations in the chat box, and um, I'll be happy to talk about it with you. All right. So let's start with um, some top 10, not top 10, excuse me, some different ways you know, websites or platforms where you can find book recommendations. So the first one that I really like is Goodreads. And most book nerds, if not, no, not all, well, most book nerds know about Goodreads. And if you don't, you need to know about it now. So it's goodreads.com. It is an Amazon company now. And as you start to load your um books onto your shelves, you know, books that you've read, books that you've rated, books that you want to read, the algorithm will pick up and start um, giving you recommendations for books that you may like. So I really do enjoy Goodreads. It's a great place to um, talk with other bookish people, uh, join groups and clubs that are focused on reading, like book clubs. And, you know, there's a shelf addiction online book club on Goodreads. You know, I have to mention that. And um, it's a lot of good fun. So, you know, you can drool over cover art, <laughs> load a million books onto your uh, to be read shelves, all that good stuff. So, definitely check out that one. In conjunction with Goodreads is Amazon.com. You know, that's kind of obvious. You know, if you own a Kindle or, um, you know, if you just buy a lot on Amazon or even if you don't necessarily buy on Amazon but browse on Amazon, um, like let's say you look up a specific book, uh, usually there will be a little... I guess, recommendations at the bottom where it will say customers who bought this item also bought XYZ and it will be a row of things. And this is a great way to just kind of scope out some books that people who are reading what you're reading, what they're buying. So that's a great source as well. So um, let's see, I think there is, yes, Barnes and Noble. That's another great option. Um, it works in a similar way to Amazon as for it, as far as how it functions. Um, but I don't know. I feel like it's not as many books available um, that show up in the recommendations. But, you know, nonetheless, if you're a Barnes & Noble buyer and you like Barnes & Noble, then this will be a good option for you. Now, I know that there are a few other sites that I have not necessarily used, but I know, for example, if you buy books from um, the Google Play Store, I believe that also will give you some recommendations. And if you're not into apps, I believe that there are several good websites out there, but I haven't used them. For example, one is Bookish. And um, it definitely, I did look at the website earlier today, and it's definitely a pretty website. Um, There's lists and summaries and reviews, and you know, you can uh, buy through that website if you want. Um, I don't think that um, it's as robust as Goodreads, but it definitely is cool to use. Um, another one that I heard of was uh, the Sony Reader Store, 
Now, I don't have a Sony e-reader. I haven't really looked at the store, but I heard that it uses essentially the same type of thing, you know, where if you click on, click on one book, it says, you know, I don't know, recomm other recommendations based on what you've listened to. And, you know, they also have another site that's actually called What Should I Read Next? And I do like that you don't have to create account, an account to use it. That's kind of cool. You just type in a book that you like and it gives you a list of similar books. So that's actually very cool. So if you want a very quick recommendation without having to log in and, you know, scroll through different things, then that would be a good choice to use. So yeah, amongst, you know, those are some pretty good suggestions I feel like and if you've used any of those or if you have a source that you know I didn't mention please you know please do share with me I'd love to kind of find more places to you know find out about good books as well and of course you can always ask me if you want a recommendation I don't claim to know every book that's out there but you know if you're definitely liking the paranormal genre, then I think that I could recommend some good books for you. So, you know, if you want to reach out to me, do that on Twitter uh, at Shelf Addiction or go to shelfaddiction.com and leave me a voicemail. Let me know what you've been reading and I'll try to find something that I think you'll like. Now, I'm going to switch gears a little bit because um, this past weekend I went to a book con. I was a featured blogger on this book, Han. If you've been following my podcast or my blog, then you know that was Rust City Book, Han. It was the first Rust City locally here in Michigan. And it was a fun time. You know, I got to meet some of the authors I interviewed, and I got to meet some readers, and I got to meet authors that I didn't interview, and I got to meet some writers that were in the panels, um, not on the panels, but they attended. Um, I guess to kind of gather information for their writing process and things like that. So it was very cool to meet, you know, so many different types of bookish people. It was a good time. Now, one thing that I did find extremely hilarious, or not necessarily hilarious, but it was interesting. During one of the panels that I was moderating, um, it somehow came up, you know, how many books an average person reads per year? So one person in the audience said they read, I don't know, a couple hundred books per year. And, you know, we kind of said, well, what about the average person? What do you think the average person reads? And she said, oh, 100 books at least. And uh, I had to beg to differ there. I felt that, you know, the average person probably reads about, I don't know, 12, if they're on a good year, you know what I mean? Um, if they're lucky, it's 12. Um, and that was my point of view. And of course, said reader or writer, I'm not sure which she was, uh, definitely wanted to take me to task on that. She definitely disagreed and made that very clear. And then in another panel later, she asked another avid reader how many books they read. And of course, they said a high number because they too are an avid reader. But again, we were talking about average readers. So what did I do, you guys? If you know me even a little bit, I Googled it. Yes, I did. I came home and I said, let me find out because maybe I am wrong. Maybe people read a lot more than I think they do. And, you know, again, I'm not talking about book lovers or, you know, bibliophiles or, you know, anything in that arena. We're talking about your average person. Maybe not someone that joins book clubs or maybe they are. Maybe not someone who has, you know, a million books on their shelves like I do and, you know, like many of our, my fellow book nerds do. But, you know, your average person. So as of January 2014, I found on pewinternet.org, they did a study. And as of January 2014, which isn't very long ago, 76 of American adults age 18 and older said that they read at least one book. Let me restate that. They said that they've read at least one book in the past year. Almost 7 in 10 adults, 69%, read a book in print 
in the last 12, have read a book in print in the last 12 months, while 28% read an ebook and 14% listened to an audiobook. Okay, so let's break that down, right? Okay, and I found some more places to support this. If you're curious, I will have these links in the show notes so you can check them out for yourself. But let's break that down. So if we're talking (laughs) 76% of adults say they have read at least one book in the, the past year, you know, my average was 12. And that seems high compared to this. Um, I don't know about a hundred books for an average person. Uh, it seems kind of high of that. Those people that they pooled, um, 69%, uh, were male or wait, 69 males, 82 women. And of the age groups, 79, 18 to 29, 75, 30 to 49, and then... 77, 50 to 64. I hope I'm reading these numbers right. Um, But basically, this was exactly what I thought I would find, really. Um, It didn't surprise me at all. What do you guys think? Do you think that it is abnormal for someone to read so few books? Do you think this is off? Do you think that they read a lot more? I would love to have a discussion on this. Um, I also found uh, an article by um, Jordan Wiseman. It was called The Decline of the American Book Lover. And this was also written in 2014. And he found, he also sourced the same Pew Research Center report. Um, But the number of non-book readers has nearly tripled since 1978. You know, Again, that doesn't surprise me at all. And I'm curious if it surprises you. Like last year, not last year, 2014, um, let's, it has a little graph on here. It says, how many books did Americans read in the last year? And this goes from 2014 to 1978 on the graph. Um, So there's three groups, 78, 90, and 14. So let's look at this. So how many books did Americans read in 2014? 23% said none. 23% said none. Okay. Um, One to five. 31% said one to five. Six to 10 books. 17% said they read 6 to 10 books in 2014. And 11 or more, 28%. 28. So that's not very high, I gotta say. And dare I say, if you were to say, um, how many of you read over 50 books, I bet that percentage would drop to less than half of 28%. I bet you. And I'm almost sure it's gotten worse as time has gone on. You know, it's it's sad. And I love reading. And reading is my escape. And I think everyone should read. You know, turn off the TV sometimes. Turn off electronics and read a book. Unless you're reading on the Kindle, of course. Um, not to get all preachy, because you guys know I love TV. You know I love movies. I watch them both but I always make time for reading, always. Um, I can't express that enough. Like, it starts young, too, because let me tell you a little story. I remember reading, like, my mother is um, a grade school teacher, or she was before she retired, and I remember going to the library and just bringing home tons of books. And I remember doing this as far back as kindergarten. Go to the library, bring home a ton of books, read them all, and take them back, and do this over and over and over again. And then when I got to middle school, I remembered that I started reading my cousin's books. You know, I was young, reading books that I probably shouldn't have been reading, but nonetheless, I was enjoying myself. And this trend continued, you know, eighth grade, seventh, eighth grade, reading books that are probably, you know, way beyond you know, what I should be reading. But regardless, I had a great time with it. And 
you know, over time, I started to realize, you know, I like certain types of books. And then before you knew it, I was reviewing books on my own, not on an assignment, just because I felt like keeping track of all the books that I read. And I do credit that to my mom. You know, she had us in the library reading books at a really young age. And that's a good thing. And I don't know if I would have taken to reading like I did without natural, you know, as naturally as I did without that early development, that early expectation that reading is what you're supposed to do. It's fun. It's enjoyable. It's an activity. So yeah, anyway, I said all that to say, <laughs> when it's all said and done, I was right. No, I know that's petty. I'm kidding, you guys, really. Um, but it was interesting to look because, you know, I always like to know, you know, if I'm wrong and if I'm wrong, why? And, you know, what's up with that? So, yeah, it was fun stuff to do a little bit of that research. And again, um, I will have all of that information below. And yeah, that's it. So what else do I have to talk about today? Um, maybe I'll give you some blog updates. It's time for the blog rundown. Find out what's new on shelfaddiction.com. All right, guys, what's up on shelfaddiction.com? I mentioned this a little bit earlier in the podcast, but I want you to leave me a voicemail. Yes, leave me a voicemail. You don't have to call a number. You don't have to do anything, but go to shelfaddiction.com and click the voicemail button on the side of the homepage. And why do I want you to leave me a voicemail? Because I am collecting data. I want to know what book recommendations you have. Every month, I'm going to go with a different genre, and I would love to hear what you have to say, what book you recommend for your reading buddies. And actually, this is perfect because it feeds into the title. You know, at the end of the month, I am going to um, gather all of the, you know, voicemails and emails and data that I've, you know, collected from you all and talk about on a podcast episode what book recommendations have been presented for said genre. This month's genre is mystery suspense. So if you have a mystery book or a suspense book that you really enjoy and you think that others would enjoy, go to my blog, hit that voicemail button, and you have 90 seconds, I believe, to leave your name, your location, your blog if you're a blogger, you know, your company if you like, mention you're an author or whatever you'd like, along with the title and the author, and a one-liner as to why you recommend it. I would really appreciate that. Um, I haven't gotten many yet, but I, I, I have hope. I have hope that you guys are going to look out for me and will help me out. So leave me a voicemail. Let me know what book you like in that genre. Um, I'm not sure what genre I'm going to do for the month of October yet, um, or September, I'm like jumping ahead a whole month. Um, but I think, uh, it'd be something cool. I know October, I probably will do horror or something like that, but I'm not sure for September. So anyway, leave me something mystery or suspense driven. Now I would love to hear that. Um, what else is going on on the blog? not too much. I'm rearranging a few things. So I think you should check it out. See if you like uh, the layout. If not, you know, I don't know, feel free to comment as well. I'm open to that. It's all good. So let's see, what else do I have on the agenda for today? Uh, not too much, really. Um, I guess I'll talk a little bit about what I'm reading right now. You know, I always do this with the authors. And I thought it might be fun to share with you guys what I'm reading in case you don't follow me on social media, but you should, because, you know, I'm always reading good stuff. Right now, I am all about the Jennifer Armand Trout series. Um, I think it's a trilogy, actually. And it's all about gargoyles, angels, and demons. And then that is called the Dark Elements trilogy. It's three books and a prequel. So, so far, I've read the prequel. I've read book one and I'm currently on book two, which is called Cold uh, Stone Cold Touch. It's really cute. It's kind of like YA slash NA, which is young adult and new adult. It's kind of like in between because our heroine is um, 
almost 18, but she's still in high school. And some of the other guys are um, 18, and I think one is 23-ish or something like that. But regardless, it's a very good. If you like fantasy, if you like a little romance thrown in with it, and you like drama, then The Dark Elements is for you. I'm really enjoying it. We'll see how things shake out when I get to the end of the trilogy. I plan on doing a all-in-one book review on my YouTube channel, so um, definitely subscribe because I know you don't want to miss that. Also, I decided to try out a um, graphic novel. Yeah, uh, I'm not really one to be into graphic novels. I've never really read one. I kind of think comic books are fun, a fun idea, but I've never really been one to gravitate toward it. So one of my real world book clubs is uh, reading The Sandman, volume one and two, that is by Neil Gaiman. I am still mid volume one and book club is tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. And I have not finished volume one. Um, we'll see. I mean, so far, I think the story is interesting enough. The pictures are kind of cool to look at, but I don't think it's really stuck all the way, if you know what I mean. So that's interesting enough. So if you guys have read The Sandman and you like it, I would love to know about that. Like, what did you like about it? Um, did you like it? and you only read graphic novels or never read graphic novels, I would love to hear like your point of view on that and like where your history is as far as reading. Because I read somewhere that people um, suggest that while this book is awesome, it's really not for the first time comic book reader, which is what I am. So I'm curious to see your take on that. And lastly, I'm listening to an audiobook. You know, I always have to have an audiobook. So I am listening to Glass Sword, which is the second book in the Red Queen. Uh, I think it's a trilogy by Victoria Aveyard. Now, oh goodness, not to want, I don't want to really review it right now. I'm about 60% through and it's all right. I'm not loving it. You know, it's a dis dystopia-ish fantasy title, and it's definitely young adult. Um, so if you're into that, definitely check it out. Um, the first time around, I listened to it on audio I, and read Red Queen at the same time, and I did enjoy it, but I'm just not having the warm and fuzzies um, about Glass Ward that I, that I did about Red Queen. So I don't know if you guys are reading that or have read that, and you think that was a, you know, a good book. I don't know. I'd like to hear what you have to say as always. So yeah, that's that on that. And uh, yeah, so I guess we can wrap things up. No sense in yammering about and talking your ear off. So thank you so much for listening. If you are live, please go ahead and like this podcast. So I know that you're out there. I would really appreciate that. And in the meantime, go ahead and hit that follow button on Spreaker.com, the only place where you can listen live or subscribe and listen later on the, in the iTunes store or in the Google Play Music Store. That's it for today. And until next time, happy reading. Bye, guys.